Maybe let's let's talk a little bit about uh, resume, resume and uh, CV. Uh, I guess I mean I usually I usually call it CV, but uh, maybe it's the same thing, isn't? Uh, uh, I mean, one question is, what's the difference between CV and resume? There is a little bit of difference, uh, actually. A little bit of difference. The difference so, is so that... Let's, let's talk about... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, it's something that we can talk about in like a couple sentences. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, CV is mostly used, at least in the US, is mostly used by academias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then every, pretty much everybody else calls it resume. Resume. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's but otherwise, otherwise there is no difference. I mean, like it's not like it's a completely different document that uh, is based on completely. I different think that different principles. industries want different things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you know, it, yep. like I think that uh, um, modeling agencies want a list of mm -hmm. jobs that you have previously worked at and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and they like your experiences, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. so different different industries might want different things, but you know, on the on the, you know, at least on an everyday basis, they are considered interchangeable, except that uh, mm -hmm. academia has like to call it CVs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's talk about software industry. So, in software industry, what are the initial expectations from a job uh, or from HR person or person who offers a job about the candidate? That's CVs or resumes or any formal documents that they submit. So what what these documents need to to have? What what are the must have uh, items of these documents? And, it really uh, depends on the job, right? I mean, you know, most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the starting process. The starting process is that mm -hmm. your hiring manager. Yeah. Says that I need to hire somebody. Okay. Now this hiring manager right. might be a startup founder who is working by himself but if not uh -huh. then there's usually you know HR recruiters that will help mm -hmm. streamline the process in a larger corporation and mm -hmm. so they tell them say hey we need to hire we need to have we have a position to fill and then they say okay we'll open the position and we will start our recruiting and hiring process and so the next question is this, what is the requirement? Mm -hmm. And this is up to the hiring managers to answer. Some of these requirements are well understood by the hiring, by the HR uh, team because they are the company's policy. So for example, levels, okay. What level is this person at? Oh, you know, this person is level 58, level 64. Level blah 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 whatever. Uh -huh. Okay, so these are internal company speak that only yeah. the company's insiders will understand what these levels mean. Yeah. It usually ties mm -hmm. to some sort of compensation, and which ties to some sort of uh, uh, some sort of responsibility. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. a larger company, they will try to standardize. Yeah. Um, uh, position names, uh, responsibilities, etc. Okay, mm -hmm. for good, for bad, for now we're not going to discuss that, but it happens. It just happens like this, mm -hmm. that larger companies want to streamline their operation. So they will standardize mm -hmm. on all these nomenclatures that they use themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but there would still be very specific stuff that only hiring manager gets to decide. Should this person mm -hmm. have Java experience? Should this person have C sharp experience, PHP experience? Mm -hmm. Should this person mm -hmm. have Angular 2 experience or React oh. experience? Some of these questions really are decided by the hiring manager because mm -hmm. the har it depends on the projects that the hiring manager have. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if this hiring manager is working on some sort of an embedded system, mm -hmm then chances are that uh, none of these will apply. Chances are that this hiring manager wants someone with C and C++ experiences, or maybe mm -hmm. even something called fourth. You know, there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. All these different types of skills that only the mm -hmm. hiring managers know what is needed on a given job. Same, the HR person will have no idea because that's not HR person's specialty. HR oh, person oh. is only going to know, okay, you hiring manager, you have five requirements. And these five requirements include that someone needs to have 10 years of experience mm -hmm. and includes that needs to have uh, 
blah 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 skills, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe web, maybe maybe uh, you know SQL Server, mm-hmm. right? And maybe AWS, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, but then in this ten years experience, besides these skills, I also want to see someone who has previously played a dev lead or a dev manager mm-hmm. position. Okay, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that is a requirement. Now, mm-hmm. the HR person's job then is then take that requirement and then try to push through the recruiting pipeline. Say, I need mm-hmm. all these things, and these things are then going to go to potentially job boards, yeah, or it goes to other recruiters that helps fulfill these positions. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps through personal network. Yeah, you know. But anybody that uh, um, that goes through these intermediaries, mm-hmm. all of them will only know these words. None of them would mm-hmm. know anything else but these words. And finally, blah blah mm-hmm. blah blah blah, it gets to the candidate. The candidate mm-hmm. somehow either see it, see the job posting. Or that the, somebody find them with saying that, hey, by the way, your resume looks like it can be a fit. All right, like you said mm-hmm. earlier, that mm-hmm. might be indiscriminate that uh, <laughs> being mm-hmm. reached out for. But no. they try to see there's a fit. So if you want to apply for the job, what do you think that you need mm-hmm. to say in order for them to consider you? What do you think your resume need to say? Well, I mean, first of all, I need to, I, I, in fact, it's a, it's a multi-criteria decision, right? So where I need to satisfy two different sets of requirements. So first of all, I need to send formal documents to a, a HR person and satisfy their requirements. Now, also, I need to, <laughs> I need to have something in my documents that actually addresses the second set of requirements, which is uh, the actual projects or specific languages that I, I worked with. Uh, I guess I need both. That would be my 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 intuitive. Uh, answer. When you say both, what's the first one? The first one uh, I'm looking at HR HR because that that's the first point of contact, right? So basically, I will interact with HR person, and uh, only if I'm successful in that step, they will put me in touch with uh, the company, right? So you're you're so, going too fast, by the way. You're not going to mm-hmm. talk to the HR until your mm-hmm. resumes matches all these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a keyword mm-hmm. yeah. scan. Mm-hmm. So basically, if your resume, let's just say that if your resume lacked the word web, or if your resume lacks yeah. the word SQL Server or AWS, mm-hmm. then yeah. you are on a lower tier of candidates right. than someone who is match right. all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that is That's how true. this whole process will work. That before you talk to anybody, before you talk to mm-hmm. A recruiter before you talk to an HR before you talk to uh, the hiring manager mm-hmm. your resume has to be a match first and th- yeah. since we're on the question about resumes it means that mm-hmm. your resume needs to have these keywords that are written in mm-hmm. that are written in them so yeah. so if you want to ask what should exist in your resume the very first thing mm-hmm. that you have to do is that you have to make sure whatever job you're applying for your resume mm-hmm. matches what that job is asking for, matches or exceeds what the job is asking for on a keyword mm-hmm. basis. Because these days, there are so many resumes out there, so many candidates go through, even during the good times, because people always keep their resumes on file. I mean, companies mm-hmm. keep the resumes mm-hmm. on file. They don't they don't start yeah. everything from scratch. So they, so they mm-hmm. have a lot of volumes of resumes, especially the successful companies. For successful mm-hmm. companies, there are so many candidates for every position that they're that's applying over there because it's hot. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to get in, right? Mm-hmm. So under yeah. those situations, that the only way for you to stand out first, being considered mm-hmm. first, is if your resume scans uh, compare matches very well against the requirements, mm-hmm. basically. And yeah. it's only when it yeah. matches against the requirement then someone live would talk to you because computers mm-hmm. are there to help automate the process of the matching, however imperfect it is. Okay, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. going to yeah. do that first because otherwise, the amount of work of looking through resumes is overwhelming for the HRs, for mm-hmm. the hiring managers, 
they have other things to do besides looking at people's resumes and talk to people that could be a wrong match. Okay. So always make yeah. sure that your resumes, your resume, when I say resumes, because you probably want to have multiple versions of your resumes for all the different types mm -hmm. of jobs that you're applying to, all the different positions, oh. because mm -hmm. chances are that these positions will be asking for different things. And you mm -hmm. want to make sure you highlight them, the resumes in such a way that will match the skin. So that way you can beat mm -hmm. the scanning system and then move to the next step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time this time. Mm -hmm. Okay.